Month 5 in the time of the Eternal, Month 7, Day 26, of 2023. In dreams, I saw how a family had embraced the faith. They went to live in a cabin in small beds, bunk beds. And I saw that it was time for the spring feast. They were experiencing this experience for the first time. They were rejoicing in this. But, when the feast was in the middle of its time, great concern entered the head of the family, he thought about how he would support his family. I saw him overwhelmed and determined to return to the city to continue with his old job. Then, I was told, talk to him. I did it like that. I opened my mouth and these words came out, how did Lot survive when Sodom and Gomorrah, Atma and Zeboim were destroyed? He only took what he was able to carry. But his life was not prosperous because by his own choice he did not seek his uncle Abraham, nor did he seek me, his God, but to his fate he brought more evil into this world through the offspring of his son's grandsons. So now, if you seek me with all your heart, will I not be for you? The virtue, I give it. The blessing comes from me. True prosperity comes from me. So why don't you run to me for help? Do my formula correctly and you will have victory. Seek first my kingdom, and everything else will be added to you. The man stood up, his eyes widened and he calmed down. And he advanced on this. And he prospered. Like this, happiness reigned in his house, and he praised God. I didn't see any more there. There I did not hear more. Moreover, beloved brothers, let us pay close attention to this. Many people go to the fields hoping that their sustenance will fall from the sky. And the Lord is more than enough to send us manna from heaven, as he did to the people of Israel when they wandered for forty years in the desert. But, at this moment in the history of this world, it will not be like that, it will not be, in the same way. He sends us to till the land, to be restrained in spending, to do things as he really wants us to do them. So that it goes well to us. Small house. Wide terrain. Place that has water. Site where we can sow. Site where we are not deprived of worshipping our God. A place where no one wants to be, because it is much cheaper, more economical. We will economize. And like this everything necessary that we need to be able to get settled there, to start, it will be in our hands to be able to do it. But many, with their bad testimony for not obeying these indications of the Eternal, have made others see this path of going to the field as something unattainable, or that it is only for those who have money. And those who don't, well, they will not be able to advance. If this were so, the Lord would be unjust. Because he is not calling to the field those who only have money, he is calling everyone to the field equally. Soon, the cities, it will not be able to step on them, beloved brothers. The enemy, with all his companions, is already loose. Many people are already permanently possessed, because that's how I've been let know. So have I seen. So I have been shown. Beloved brothers, we are in very dangerous times. All this artificial intelligence and all these things that the enemy is plotting to control the human race, is still viable at this time. We already have this. And it will continue to increase. So let us put what we have on the altar of the Lord. Let's not be pending whether the retirement they are giving us is going to sustain us, because soon that will not be the case. No help will get anywhere. The people will be deprived of all economy, beloved brothers, of all service that comes from the cities. Then, what will become of the one who procrastinated? What will become of the one who thought that things were going to be one way and they were another? What will become of the one who looks at those of us in the field as something ideal, but not for him? Unfortunately, all these people will give up. All these people will become part of the system that will be against God and his people. It's sad. These things have been shown to me time after time, and I have left them with each of you so that you may know them. Oh, beloved brothers! Even in all these adversities that we have in this walk, there is the guidance of the Lord, because we must be tested in each degree each one of us to be able to give the stature that God wants from each one of us in this walk. Nobody said it was easy. 
but neither has anyone said that it is impossible. All the necessary arrangements must be made for this to be viable in the life of each one of those who want to obey the message of going out to the field that Christ Jesus has given. This is not my idea, it is not, mine, it was not Ellen G. White's idea. It is God who is telling his people to get out into the field before it is too late. Many people stay in cities for convenience. But, if they really thought about what is of convenience, what would be of convenience for them is that they run to the field with their families from now. We are already at the end of everything that is going to explode in the cities, it is going to explode even stronger than what we see. I can't imagine, I don't even want to think, what will happen to those who continue to delay this situation. Many stick to the cities for a medication, for health situations. It is better to die in the path of the eternal than to live an artificial life in the hands of the enemy. The Lord will take care of each of his children who are faithful and obedient. Oh, beloved brothers! If we really want our salvation and we see the impossibility of going out into the field, that is viable for us or for the person who is thinking about it, kneel down and ask the Eternal for a way out. He's going to give it to you. Because he is attentive to those who want to do his will. Let's not go out into the field out of fear. Let's go out into the field out of obedience. Those who leave out of fear are always thinking about the city. They become indolent with their hands. Their thinking becomes lazy. And their body remains inert in a corner thinking where the sustenance will fall from. But, those who go out into the field out of obedience, give everything for everything so that their hands can be useful. They give everything for everything, so that they can support themselves and, at the same time, pass on their experiences to others so that others can be blessed. That is the real path of those of us who are doing the will of the Lord. And who want to continue doing it, and sharing the blessings we have received with others. People today call blessings only to the economic. They don't realize that having a good piece of land in front of them, with a little cabin, that has water and space, and that they can grow some fruits, is a blessing. They don't see it as a blessing, they see it as scarcity. Also, having health and strength to do this they don't see as a blessing, they see it as scarcity. They only see as a blessing having their saddlebag full of money. Oh, beloved brothers, what a sad vision of the people of God at this hour. Let's ask the Almighty to really let us see things as they really are. So that, in this way, we can, in Him, achieve victory. Because, otherwise, we will not be able to reach the celestial homeland. We won't be able to reach the celestial homeland, with such poor vision. Because, losing goods is a lot, and health is even more, but, to lose your soul, beloved brothers, that is such a loss that it can never be recovered. Let's think and analyze this. God grant that we can understand it, and we can put into practice in our life the ordinances of the Eternal. May the Lord bless us.